Conversations from the Cave is a raw self-help podcast dedicated to discussing men's issues. From pornography to parenting, from religion to real life, from learning to loving, we discuss the real issues that affect real men every day. Join us each week for powerful, revealing Conversations from the Cave. Now your host, Kurt Kennedy. This is Conversations from the Cave. I'm your host, Kirk Kennedy. We do it each and every week on Sunday afternoons at noon. We invite you to join us each and every week for another installment. And this week's topic is the topic of lust. We talked about it last week, um, the importance of understanding how lust causes you to make foolish decisions. And a lot of guys are led by lust. And so today we're going to take some time and talk about it. As always, we're joined in studio by three really great guys. To my right, Mustang, can you let us know that you're here? Hey, this is Mustang. Very excited to be back on another episode of Conversations from the Cave. And right in the middle, BA, thanks so much for joining us again. Can you give us a shout out and let us know you're here? This is BA here in Huntsville, Alabama. Thanks for being here and let's change these lives one word at a time. And then lastly, Nola, can you let us know you're here, sir? This is Nola73. Meet you where you're at. So, gentlemen, we talked last week about a scenario that played out on social media, and it was the issue of a man who was so driven by his lusts and passions that he didn't bother to check as to whether or not the woman he was pursuing was legal, even of age, to be involved in a relationship. What's interesting about that is uh, we had a variety of different viewpoints on uh, how things should be approached, but at the end of it, what we all could agree on was that he was being led by his lusts and his passions. What we wanted to talk about this week is how to define the difference between lust and love. Because a lot of people say, hey, I'm in love when they get that, you know, heart palpitation and they get those flushed skin and uh, clammy hands when they see that beautiful person or that handsome guy uh, walk into the room. But what really is love and how can we define it in a way that is applicable to um or how can we define it as different than what we see in terms of lust? And I'll open that up to the group. Anybody can chime in in any order. Uh, I'll go ahead and go. Um, I feel very strongly that love is the not necessarily the act, but willing to perform the act of giving up most of what you possess, if not everything that you have uh, for this other person. Um, I don't feel like love is just a... I like you. You're really, 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 really good looking, you know, because, you know, when I was a kid, I thought my mom was really, really good looking, but I didn't lust after her, you know, um, you kind of thing. So long story short, um, I feel like love is, is the act of, of a sacrifice for someone else. And I mean, yes, I mean, could that segue into the Bible and Jesus? Yes. That's not what I was doing, but yes, could it? Yes. But, um, you know, when my wife, for perfect example, I'm African-American, my wife's Caucasian. She was, you know, when I first met her, you know, I've always been at barbershop. Any African-American guys out there know we go to a barbershop. Well, she goes to a salon. Well, she was at home. She didn't go to the salon this day, and she was at home, and she was cutting her hair. And I saw her little, like, hair snippets fall on the ground, and they looked repulsive. They were, like, so ugly. I've never in my life had seen little Caucasian people hair snippets. It was weird. Like, little clips of white people hair. I mean, I'm not trying to sound, you know, that's what it was at the time. That's what I was thinking. You know, but there's just Caucasian Caucasian hair at the time. I was like, there goes the oh. other half of our... No. And everyone leaves. <laughs> no, but no, that's the, at the, the time, that's what I was... Like, and click, everyone switches over. But no, no, at the time, that's what I was... At the time, that's how I felt. You know, I was like, what is... Who, you know, what is this thing that, you know... But long story short, I mean, all that to say... I was doing the exact same thing. I was shaving in the sink and I would shave my beard and she just comes in there and she sees all these little <laughs> brown person hairs or African-American hair, but whatever the case is all in the sink and it's not, she's not used to it. Yeah. You know, and of yeah. course we argue, yeah, can't really keep your stuff and get your stuff off the floor, keep your stuff out of the sink, you know, but over time we've come to be considerate. Yeah. I, I shave and I don't think it's that much that's lying around the sink or it can wait until I get out of the shower or whatever before I go and clean up everything or vacuum up or whatever happened. But now because I love her, I will go ahead and get clean that section so she doesn't have to suffer, quote unquote, seeing it if she doesn't like it. And the same for her. When she gets done, she'll go and clean up whatever it is. So I don't have to, quote unquote, suffer, even though it's not really suffering. But it's a small amount. And it's enough that she will actually go out of her way to make sure things are done, you know, for me. Um, And that that kind of thing, even though it's a very small example, just a small example of uh, that is still an example of what I would like to consider is love. 
uh, again, just giving up something that you really, really want. Dude, I really don't feel like picking this stuff up right now. I got to go take a shower. Let me go to the gym. I'll come back and clean it later, whatever. But you know what? Let me get it done. She likes it. It makes her feel better. Let's do it. Okay. Um, now define lust. You've, you've talked a little bit about love. Do you have a differing opinion about lust and how they, they differ from each other? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's pretty easy. It's you know, I'd like to say that anyway. It's pretty easy. You know, it's just a it's it's not it's relatively devoid of the other. Um, and I'd, I'm afraid to say that because you you know I can lust after my wife. You know what I mean? But um, I guess the point is if if that's all you're doing is 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 if that's what we're talking about is lust without love. Um, you know, it's it's literally just a physical feeling. Uh, it's 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 a very selfish. This is what I want, despite what you want. This is what I want. I guess one is is giving and emitting. You know, uh, the other one is receiving and um, uh, and uh, self serving. Uh, in, in my opinion, uh, the difference between lust and love. Hopefully, that helps. Yeah. So, what you're talking about, and if I'm hearing you, just to do a brief synopsis, is that love starts from the premise of what can I give in terms of my affection to someone else? How can I be sacrificial? How can I? Um, allow this other human being to, or, you know, if it's a group of human beings, understand that I have this particular feeling. Uh, and it's backed up by actions of service, actions of, of sacrifice. Uh, those were words that you used when you described love. Giving was one of the first words you used. Uh, when you think about lust, um, when you lust for something, when you lust for money, uh, it's about getting more money. If you lust for power, it's about getting more attention. It's about pushing others out of the way so that you can mm -hmm. be in front. It's uh, it's mm -hmm. about, you know, uh, saying how much you have and how big you are. You're huge. You know, you're you're the kind of person who's uh, uh, getting more of something makes you feel better about yourself. Whereas in terms of this notion of service and sacrifice, it's quite the opposite. It's what you can give, what you can do to make the life of others better. When you think about the Christian message of giving, it's, you know, we are giving to the poor. We're humbly offering our service to those who are less fortunate than ourselves. We're about blessing others. When we think of blessings, love and blessings go together. Typically, when you bless someone, you give of yourself. It's not what you can take from the other person. It's what you can give of yourself. Um, those are examples of, of what I think you're saying. So that the differentiation right now, based on your comments, seems to be about receiving versus giving. B.A., do you agree with that, or do you have a different view? I absolutely agree. And I'll just, I'll just go short and sweet, because Mustang shared so much. And I don't know what you believe out there, but I believe I'm created. My body was made from the dirt. My body was made of the of the earth. So the point I make there is you, in love, you look past the physical abstraction. You look to the soul because that's how we are. That's what we are. We are every person has a soul. And the physical limitations, the disabilities, whatever, in any person, they are taken down in love. And you see, you know, how to love. And learn how to love him continually. And so what I'm I hearing you agree. say, I didn't mean to cut across. I just wanted to make sure I'm hearing what you're saying. So what you're saying is that a person who uh, is loving uh, looks past the imperfections in others and, and then accepts them. So love and acceptance uh, as opposed to ostracism, you know, excluding people would not be an example of love. Very true. And uh, just to throw my idea of lust out there. Mm -hmm. And like what you were saying, it's, it's selfish and complete in all of its nature because you're pleasing yourself when you lust after another. And as you said, it could be money. You could be lusting after, you know, anything, an application. And a thought that came to my mind as we are talking over this topic is in Hollywood or even on the Internet, love goes beyond those typical things that you see online. But now lust makes the money and the control over so many things in people's lives because of how it is self-serving and it provides so much for, you know, an immediate 
pleasure. So uh, so you're talking about self-gratification. So lust is, is steeped in self-gratification, and that, that for you is something that uh, differentiates lust from love, where love is giving, looking at the uh, ability to reach out to others and to help make their lives better. Uh, Nola, do you al- also have a, a similar belief, or is your belief different than what you've heard? Well, I'm going to say this. I, I agree with everything that the other guys have said. Um, <clears throat> to me, lust is, is exactly what, 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 what Mustang said. You know, um, when, you, when you look at a person that, and you, and you develop, which, and you just basically say what you would like to do, that's, that's a form of, you know, you, you only see that person in, um, in, in, in a sexual manner. Um, and, and of course, a person can lust after their wife, they can lust after their significant other, but when that person is of no relations to you, and you just see that person and undress that person with your eyes, that's lust. Um, and, and to me, a lot of us do that. You know, as men, as women, we see each other, we lust temporarily, we, we have preconceived notions of what we would like to do or what we can do, and the reality is we don't even do what we think we want to do. Let me, ask when you, we, let me ask you something. Do you think that social media and, you know, the Instagram uh, society where we, uh, and Facebook society where we put, you know, these special photo filters to make ourselves look better, we put a great deal of energy into getting that perfect selfie and that... It, it's all about putting photos that make your life look valuable to others. Do we associate now this self gratification with the observer feeding our lust for attention by our portrayal of ourselves online? I mean, you, you talked a lot about what you see on these, these social media sites. Give me some feedback on that. Well, what you just said, hit everything on the head. Um, you know, I think Hollywood and a lot of these uh, movies that we watch has a lot to do with it. You know, everybody now is into cosmetic. To You know, they, their body is not uh, perfect anymore. You know, they don't understand that their body is the temple of the Lord. They don't understand that their body is of, of value that, you know, just because you don't look like somebody that is you consider and is uh, and, and, and the operative word is what you consider to be perfect, you know, that person is, may say the same thing, well, I'm not perfect. And, you know, and we're looking at this person as if they're beautiful. You know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Beauty is not in, you know, what you deem to be beautiful. Your nose is not looking good. So, you know, you have a lot of people that get up here and they want to beautify themselves. They want to shop photo, Photoshop themselves, you know, to get um, um, acknowledgement, to, to see how many likes they can get. I mean, yes, we are definitely all about self, you know, self-gratification, self-gratification. And at the end of the day, you came by yourself. You died by yourself. Wow. You leave by yourself. Wow. You know? Wow. And oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know, and who cares? You know, gratification don't gratification only go as far as the person that married you. Um, it, wow. It's a, I, yeah. It, it, you put that in a very <laughs> succinct, but kind of a kind of almost a morbid way. You came here by yourself and you're going out by yourself. It's like, wow. <laughs> um, so let me ask you something more specifically. Uh, just this is a wide open question for the panel. Do you guys feel that um, what's the impact of not knowing the difference between love and lust when you're making decisions about long term relationships or decisions about jobs? How does lust corrupt your decision making process? Anybody? No, let's say. Okay. Everybody, 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 everybody wanted everybody. to jump in. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll send it back around the horn. <laughs> Go ahead, B.A. Okay, okay uh, just uh, like what I was saying earlier, lust is self-gratification, and you basically, uh, you're going after what you want, and it don't care, don't matter who you hurt, who you take down, mm, mm, whatever happens, mm, you mm. are going to reach where you're going to reach. Got you, in got you. In the world, in the relationship, mm-hmm. it's all about you. Wow. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, I know uh, Mustang was getting ready to comment on uh, one part of that. Jump on in, big guy. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Um, it's just, it's all about you. You know, uh, when you find, you know, yourself thinking about, you know, how can this person please me? How can like, like, you know, um, Nola was saying, 
you know, about the, you know, I'm envisioning this person nude and I'm envisioning this person this, you know, I can tell you with all honesty, um, you know, I was dating my wife, uh, my girlfriend at the time. I did not envision her nude. I didn't. I thought she was the prettiest thing I'd ever laid eyes on. And I mean that. I mean, it sounds like I'm, you know, getting this off some move, but I really did. I thought she was just gorgeous and I did not touch her anywhere appropriate. I didn't want to lose her. You know, I was like, oh my God, if I touch this girl in an appropriate way, I might lose her, you know, and I pretty much punted other girls that were trying to talk to me at the time because I really wanted to be with this one. And she was just, she was a 